In today's time series video, we're going to be taking a look at the autocorrelation function. You'll often see this abbreviated as ACF because it's easier to say and it's quicker to type. So what we're going to take a look at specifically with the ACF is the background behind the ACF. Then we're going to jump into analyzing a few different plots. I'll explain how each of these plots work and how you can tell if a series is stationary or not. I will also compare the ACF to the PACF. And to close out this video, I'll show you in just a few lines of code how you can plot an ACF. And it's honestly super, super easy. You don't have to be great at Python. So uh, with this out of the way, let's take a look at more details about the ACF. All right, let's take a look at the ACF and how we can plot it. So first, what you should know is what is an autocorrelation. So autocorrelation refers to the correlation of a time series with the delayed copy of itself as a function of the delay. So example would be like daily closing price of a stock, daily temperature data. Um, so the ACF is going to be called the autocorrelation function. It shows you how similar the data points are to each other at different time lags. And the correlation of its lags is called ACF. So what we have over here is a value, right? And then we have lag one and lag two. So you can see right over here, 100. Well, there's no lags, right? This is our first data point. Then we have the value of 125, right? And our lag one is the previous number, which is 100. Then we have 150. Well, lag one is 125. Lag two is going to be 100. And you can see that they're right over here. Then we have 175. We have 150 is lag one. We have 125 is lag two. So 150 and 125. And finally, we have 200, right? And the previous two lags are 175 and 150. And you can see those populated right there, 175 as well as 150. Now let's take a look at the ACF plot. So the autocorrelation function will always start at lag zero. And the first line, which is called lag zero, will be one, right? So y correlated to itself is one. So you'll see this on every single ACF right over here where it starts at zero. It's always going to be one, even if you have stationary data, right? Our second line will be the correlation of y and lag one. And our third line will be the correlation of y as well as lag two. The height of the bars represents the correlation coefficient at the specific lag. And these can range from negative one to one. You can see down over here, negative one. At the very top, we have one. And this indicates the strength and direction of the correlation between the time series and its lag values. Finally, the blue area, and, and it's not always going to be a blue area. Sometimes you'll see this plotted as a line as well. But this is the significance bound, which is the 95% confidence interval, right? It indicates the range which you would expect random noise or also called white noise to fall there because there's no real autocorrelation. You have a data point that's considered significant lag if the line is above this blue line area, right? The blue area or it's a line, right? If it's above this, a significant lag. And you can see over here, this ACF, uh, without it being transformed, all these data points are significant lags. So that has some work to be done. We'll talk about that a little bit in a later slide. This one, right, obviously 0 0.0 or lag 0 is above. The others almost are all in here. This one's hard to tell, but we'll take a look at changing the size of this a little bit later, right? And if it's outside this area, right, this indicates there's a meaningful relationship between the time series values at the particular lag beyond what you expect from random noise. So a few things to take a look at, right? You have something called gradual decay, and it looks like this over here. So this is a long-term dependency in the data, which means our data is not stationary. Then we have repeated peaks. So you can see that there's multiple peaks throughout over here. This shows you that there's seasonality in the data, which again shows you um, the data is not stationary. And lastly, if there's a sharp cutoff, like in this example over here, right? This indicates the data is potentially stationary, and you can use autoregressive model. So what's the difference between ACF and PACA? So the difference between both of these is the inclusion or exclusion of indirect correlations in the calculations, right? ACF shows total correlations, while PACF isolates the direct effect. And you can see how this works over here. So ACF to assess the autocorrelation patterns and help with the MA, which is the moving average model order, the PACF to assess how much a lag contributes directly to the series useful for autoregressive model orders. So that's kind of our introduction. I'm going to take you through the code right now to plot ACF. And uh, yeah, grab your notebook and let's get started. Okay, so 
we're going to have to do is we're going to import pandas as pd. So pandas as pd. Then we're going to import numpy as mp. Then we're going to import matplotlib uh, pyplot as plt. And then from stats models graphics tsa plots import plot acf. That's the only things we'll have to import in for this video. And next, we're going to have to define our data frame. Uh, so we're going to say df equals pd.read csv. I'm going to give you guys the link to the Kaggle data set so that way you guys can download that CSV. Um, but regardless, what I did also is I brought this in over here to the file. So just drag and drop it and click over here, copy path, pass it in like that, and we're good to go. And just to make sure that this is read properly, just do df head, we'll just do five. And uh, yeah, date, open, high, low, close, volume, name. So we're good there. And uh, yeah, so what we're gonna look at is the Apple stock. So we'll say Apple stock equals data frame. Inside of here, we're gonna say data frame. We're gonna grab our name. So name, oops, name like that. We're gonna say this is equal to Apple, which is AAPL, AAPL. And then all we wanna do is grab close. So just put close like that. So grab our Apple stock. And then we can start plotting our ACF. So let's say plot ACF. And uh, this is not stationary. The next example, we'll just turn this data into stationary so you can see the differences. Um, so I'm gonna just do Plot a figure, I'm gonna set your fig size. We'll say fig size equals whatever you want. I'll just say 10.5, it doesn't really matter too much. Then we'll say plot underscore ACF, pass in our Apple stock, so it's Apple stock like that. Set your number of lags that you want. Um, I'm just gonna do 40 lags, lags equals 40. And then what I recommend is you change your marker size because a smaller one makes it kind of easier to identify your marker size, whereas larger ones, it can be kind of tough. Um, what I'm going to do next is set up a title. So plot title, so auto correlation function ACF for Apple. It's AAPL closing prices. And then just plt.show. So again, all you have to do is plot ACF, brought it in, right? And uh, set your lags, set your marker size. And yeah, just like that. And like I said, this is slow dec decline or slow decay. Obviously, this is what we don't want to have if it was stationary, right? So um, let's turn this into stationary data. And obviously, this isn't a video on stationary video. And obviously this isn't a video teaching you about stationary data. I'm gonna have that video on the channel either before this or after it's in my recording backlog. Um, but let's turn this data stationary. So we're gonna say Apple stock. We're just gonna do the log transform first. So np.log, pass in our Apple stock like that. And then we're gonna apply differencing after. Okay, so we have that. So we'll say Apple stock diff equals Apple stock log dot diff and then we're going to drop an a so drop an a like that great so we have that on the side of things and uh yeah let's take a look at the acf now so we'll just reiterate this so first set your figure size so plot to figure so fig size equals 10 and 5 10 by 5, then plot ACF at Apple stock diff. Set your lags. Lags equals 40. Marker size equals 4. PLT.title. I'm going to keep the same title, but I'm going to say this. That, and then plt.show, right?
and check it out. Like we have the one over here, which will always be one. And then almost all of our data is in here. It looks like this one might be slightly out. This looks like what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Looks very close. And we can also take a look at 35. Looks very close too. And we can always make this marker size smaller if we wanted to. Um, we're not going into too much detail in this, right? We're not doing any forecasting as of yet. But uh, regardless, right, if we want to change it, let's say we make this three, just to show you, it makes it quite smaller. And that data point looks like it is slightly out. Um, this one, again, almost looks like on the edge. It looks like it's out, though. But remember, this is 95% confidence interval. So, yeah, that's about it for... Uh, ECF Python code, literally just a few lines of code and you can plot these out. And hopefully uh, this makes a lot more sense to you. I know the first time I looked at this, it, it looked a little confusing, but now it's uh, not too bad. So that is the auto correlation function. Hope you guys found some value from this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We're uploading a few different data science and AI videos every single week. And if you wanna continue with our time series playlist, I'm gonna link a few videos down below in the description, or you can click on the playlist right here.